Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to have a look at the sea anchor I use. What they can do to help you catch more fish is pretty obvious, they slow your drift down and keep you over that spot where all the fish are gathering for longer and give you more chance to get more bites and land more fish. Now just how successful you will be with the drift anchor depends on the wind and the current and which one is dominant. Usually one or the other is going to have the larger influence. And this diagram gives you a bit of an idea, under certain conditions, how it all works. This is the drift chute itself. It expands out like a parachute, and the idea is that it slows your drift down while you're fishing. The loop on the end here is to attach a rope to pull it back in. It's a lot easier to pull it back in from the small end than it is to pull the main line in. I'll demonstrate how that works a little bit later in the video. It folds up very small, so you can store it in the side pocket of your boat. These two straps here are for attaching the main line back to the boat. If you've got your ropes set up correctly, just throw it overboard and it will open up automatically. When you're ready to pull it in, you pull on the rope attached to the small end of the chute and it just empties the water out and you can pull it in with no effort at all. Now this drift chute's not going to hold you in place the same way as a drift anchor would. Drift anchor is designed to try and keep your bait as still as possible while you're in the water. And it's basically, I look at it as a safety device. If you're disabled, you can throw that out and you're not going to drift very fast. This is just to slow your drift down so that you get more time over your fishing spot. If they're on the bite, it takes longer to drift off of it. Now the drift sheets are sized for the bait. They sell a particular size drift sheet for a particular size bait. I generally like to go one or two sizes larger than recommended for my boat, slow me down a little bit more. I think slower is better, but you don't want to be too big. If you're fishing a shallow reef, you don't want it getting down to the bottom and snagging on a reef. It's not so bad in sand, I've fished some sandy bottoms that have been shallow enough that my drift sheet is touching the bottom occasionally, but you certainly don't want that where you're likely to get it snagged up. Now I have heard of one fellow who has a well put drift chute to slow him right down and that's not a bad idea if you're fishing a deep reef but certainly not for any of the shallow reefs around Morton Bay. And just by way of comparison this is a one metre drift chute and 12 foot is about three and a half metres so the drift chute he is using is huge. As I said this is all about slowing your drift down and of course bigger is better but you have to assess where you're actually doing your fishing and decide what the risks are of getting snagged with a bigger chute. And that sort of thing is particularly important depending on how you deploy your chute. I like to deploy mine out of the stern of the boat. So the last thing I want to do in rough weather is have it hooking up on something so that the waves start coming in over the back of the boat. To deploy these sea droves, you just have to throw it over the side. Make sure your pulling line doesn't get twisted. And it will deploy itself. I'll just feed this line out so it won't get twisted up. Oh, it has got a twist in it. I'm not going to worry about it. You'll see that open out. There it goes. Opened out. Doing its job. Now it's up to me to get some fishing lines in. I don't want to waste any time going over the spot. I hope you can see through the water there, there's the drag chute in the water, it really slows down your drift, gives you a lot more time over the structure that you want to drift over. Certainly, I think it's well worth it. As long as the weather's not too rough, I can stick it out this back corner here. If it was really rough, I don't think I'd be wanting to do that, because the boat's pretty low in the back and it does slow you down. You can see the waves are just slapping against it. If it was a big wave, I think it might come over the back. I've never risked it, so I'm not sure, but uh, better safe than sorry, I reckon. Well, there it is. I hope you've got a few ideas from this on how it might help improve your catches or otherwise. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel, don't forget to click the like button if you got anything out of this video. Click the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos. And don't forget to click the notify bell as well if you'd like to get notifications of when I upload. 
Until next time, good fishing.